And that's why I'm not really the right face for this mission. What we need is someone who's genuinely, like, attractive and outgoing and inquisitive, all of that shit. You know, someone like, um... I'm Connie Huck. I'm 33 years old, but I look about nine. And for as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by the world of urination. As a girl, I've always found it easy to urinate. I simply sit down and relax the muscles of my external urinary sphincter, allowing urine to flow from my bladder through my urethra and vulva. I then simply wipe myself clean, flush the toilet, and go back into the studio to shake hands with the floor manager as if nothing happened. But for men, urinating can be anything but carefree. A terrifying 7% of the male population, that's two million men, are believed to suffer from pyuresis, a social anxiety disorder which stops them emptying their bladders when standing beside a stranger to urinal. I'm determined to help them, and that's why I'm on a mission to encourage British men to shrug off the shame of shycock and join me for a mass celebratory outdoor piss on a hill. But first, I have to get to know the subject firsthand. You know what? I just had a bit of a realisation in the loo. I just had a real thought that if I'm going to do this properly, it's no good sort of peeing sitting down in a cubicle. I actually have to get into the park, get into the psyche, get into the role. I need to do this properly. I need to feel what it's like to be one of those men. I need to pee at a urinal. Inside here is um, actually what is termed as a shiwi. Now, this is kind of like a funnel. I actually, oh, oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> this is like, I guess you could say it's like a, a well, a penis, a plastic penis. Right, so I guess that fits there and that goes on there. Undo my flies, stick it in, in the nicks. I feel like maybe my muscles have seized up or something because I actually don't feel like I can do the wing. It's really weird, but there is something strangely empowering. I do feel like, oh, look, I've got the wing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh. Mm, yeah, now there's a slight danger at this point that our mission might be coming across as a bit gratuitous. So we need to justify ourselves by proving this is a real issue. To get the lowdown on pyuresis, I met psychologist Jeffrey Beatty. He told me the inability to urinate is caused by alpha male identity issues and a problem with proximity. Some psychologists have said what it's about really is that when, when males weigh from certain species, it's a way of marking out territory. Another kind of theory is that it's all to do with social anxiety. Hmm, yeah, well, while he spouts science stuff, we need to find some men who actually suffer from this. So our researchers spring into action, hitting phones and the internet in search of men who can't go. And you know what? They found some. And I'd just like to remind you that these men are genuine sufferers, and this is a genuine issue. I'm Simon Luckley, 26 years old, and I have trouble peeing in public. I've suffered from this condition since I was about 12, 13 years old. If I'm standing um, at a urinal next to another man. What goes through my head is a feeling of self-consciousness. Um, where, where do I look? Um, nothing's coming, nothing's coming out. Um, <laughs> um, and it's, I'm just waiting and I'm thinking, you know, people are looking at me thinking, oh, he's not going to the loo, he's not going to the loo, he's, he's not managing it. And it's something that um, makes me feel like I want the ground to swallow me up at that moment in time, and it's not, not very nice. My name's Matt Bell. I'm 28 years old, and I've suffered from this condition for pretty much as long as I can remember. Um, my first actual sort of comprehensive memory of not being able to wee standing next to someone is when I was nine years old, and... Um, from then on, it's been a constant burden. And what's weird is that as soon as I go into a cubicle, because I've got walls on three sides, even if the door's open, no issue whatsoever. It's just that if people are near me, I can't urinate, and I don't know why. OK, so we've got Connie on board, and we've got our sufferers. Now we have to work out what to do with them, and that means watching Miss Naked Beauty. Channel 4's Miss Naked Beauty, fronted by style expert and rude anagram Gok Wan, might not look like a mission show, but it bloody well is. On the face of it, a beauty contest full of tit and bum action, it's actually an exercise in female empowerment full of tit and bum action, in which Gok, the man who knows women 300 times better than they know themselves, teams up with pro-celebrity bikini filler Mylene Class and embarks on a mission to find a natural beauty messiah. If you thought beauty contests were all about perfect smiles, 10-inch waist and plastic boobs saving the world, then think again. Yes, yeah, sod saving the world. This isn't a beauty contest. It's a natural beauty contest, and the winner's got to be ruddy talented. 
Miss Naked Beauty will become your representative, writing up her investigations into the ugly side of beauty in four special reports for Glamour magazine. Having established the sheer gravity of the appointment, their first task is to find some contestants with a recruitment drive that turns the capital into a sort of Blade Runner fascist state in which Gok Wan is Minister of Fun. Once he's found his girls, Gok invites them to Blackpool Pier and sets his first thrilling task. It's now time... <laughs> ...to get into your bikinis! But don't worry, it's not so we can leer at them. Unlike beauty contests of the past, our girls aren't going to be judged on their warts and body shapes. This challenge is designed for the girls to cast off fears. Yeah, that's it. Cast off those fears. Oh, go on. Embrace their lumps and bumps. Embrace your lumps and bumps. And take a good look at each other's bodies. Go on. Oh, have a good look at each other's bodies. Oh, f***. Now keep empowering yourselves, you bitches! It's around this point the show starts accelerating down mind f alley. Having established that women should be free to be who they are and disregard any and all forms of judgement, it brings in three judges to judge them, namely Misha Paris, James Brown, played here by Sean Penn in Carlito's Way, and... Gutsy Kate Flett knows the beauty industry. She's not gutsy, she's quite slim, f***ing hell, Gok. Don't be so judgmental, that's her job. Since in Gok's right, judging the contestants on the basis of their looks is verboten, the judges have to judge them in other ways. So let's take note and see precisely what they're looking for. What's she got to be, gutsy Kate? The winner is meant to be an inspiration to women. OK, an inspiration. She's got to be able to write articles for Glamour magazine. So at least nine years old. She's got to be really, really sharp and on the money. Right, so that means, um, nothing. What we're looking for now from a modern beauty queen is somebody who looks great in a swimsuit on her terms, but has a lot more going on. Right, is she going to publish a list of these terms? She doesn't know what she's talking about. What about Misha Paris? I'm here to find the most beautiful woman that has old-school glamour with a modern twist. What, like an Edwardian bonnet with a f***ing iPod glued to the front? Intelligence and charm and sophistication. And hooves. Next. I'm going to be looking for a girl who is different. That's the most important thing. OK, different. They've got to be different, they've got to be unique. Unique? What, as opposed to different? Got to have some personality, got to have a lot of personality. Every person's got a personality, you bum box. Uh, probably a lot of attitude. Oh, be specific. And uh, far be it for me to sound shallow, but it will help if they're great looking. Oh, right, so it is a beauty contest, you f***ing liars. Why didn't you just say? With the judging criteria clearly established, the girls face the panel for the first time, hoping to impress them with their wits and not repeat not their tits. Although you can see those jiggling around in their bikinis, if you like. Hey, it's empowerment, yeah. I hate being the same as anyone else, cos I think uniqueness is the nut. Having listened to bullshit and gawped at some Polaroids, the judges whittle the group down to a more manageable size, and the show then sets about systematically empowering them. And make no mistake, Gok's very clear about why that's important. Beauty is owned by an industry that dictates what we believe is beautiful, putting women under mad extreme pressure to conform to fake ideals. Yeah, so rather than putting women under extreme pressure like the beauty industry Nazis, he gathers them in a disused swimming pool, tells them to strip and turns a fire hose on them in a scene that is in no way reminiscent of Schindler's List, because this is filmed in colour. But for some, bearing all is a bit of a shock. Weirdly, this impromptu makeup removal upsets some of the girls, but luckily Mylene's on hand to calm their fears by telling them how great they look without makeup through her face covered in makeup. What you've just had to do, don't underestimate how hard that is. What you've just done is incredible. Oh, no, it's horrible. No, sorry, this is. No. It's not horrible. It's not horrible. Tell me one good thing that you can see. One good thing. You standing behind me in your makeup? <laughs> Is it your eyes? It's your beautiful eyes. Well, don't talk to yourself. You're meant to be comforting her. You look absolutely stunning. 